Hi guys, I welcome you back to Electricity Market in India. Today topic is a very pertinent topic, which is interstate versus interstate open access. The question being asked by a lot of my friends in industries, which option is best for their uh, plant and uh, what is the major difference between both interstate and interstate open access and uh, how they can achieve RE100 ambitions of achieving 100% renewable energy procurement for their plants. So today in this topic, we'll try to cover most of it. And in case you are new to this uh, channel, do consider subscribing to this channel for getting all the important updates on power sector, on Indian power sector. And uh, uh, let's begin today's presentation without wasting any of your time. <clears throat> so those who have seen my earlier videos on what is open access, I had covered this slightly uh, on what is open access, what are the various kinds of open access. So the major difference uh, between the open access is the intrastate open access and interstate open access. Now, as the name suggests, intrastate open access means when your generator, which is supplying power and the consumer, which is consuming power are both within the same state. And interstate open access means there are multiple states involved where the generator of the power and the consumer of power are in different states. Now, what are the major difference between interstate and interstate open access is uh, under interstate open access, you are only dealing with one regulator, which is the one state electricity regulatory commission. So all the policies and all disputes or any kind of uh, arbitration between the generator and the consumer will be sent to the uh, single uh, regulatory commission. And also uh, in since it's a single state which you are dealing with, you have only one load dispatch center, which is the state load dispatch center, which would be scheduling the procurement and dispatching of your power. Also, since you are in the same state, you might be using the state transmission utility is a network for transmitting your power from the generation unit to the consumer unit. Since it's interstate, it follows the state policies. So there are multiple state policies uh, we, we have seen over the past few years that states have come out with their own solar policies, their own wind policies, their own energy wheeling and uh, banking agreements policies, their own hybrid policies. So uh, since it's more driven by the state uh, uh, regulatory commission and state un understanding of the geography, so th these are more driven by the state policies. And what we have seen is many a times incentives are being provided by the state governments for the industries as well as the generating companies uh, which, to allow them to uh, provide power to the consumers at certain discounted uh, conditions such as they could waive the cross subsidy surcharge for a certain period of time they can waive the additional surcharge for a certain period of time they don't have to pay electricity duty on open access for a certain period of time so these kind of incentives you can only see under the interstate open access framework now coming on to the interstate open access where we are using multiple states the regulator becomes central electricity regulatory commission because it's a jurisdiction of two states it goes to the cerc as per electricity act now since there are multiple states involved you might be uh, procuring power from the western part of india and your plant could be in the eastern part of India. So in that case, you also need to your power would be going from the western region to the eastern region of India. So in that case, you will be uh, scheduling your power through western regional load dispatch center to the eastern regional load dispatch center that is WRLDC to ERLDC. And similarly, since your power would be stepping down to a certain voltage level at your plant, you would also be dealing with the state load dispatch center for the end uh, consumption of the power. Now, uh, as we understand, there are different, the generating plant and the consumer plant are in different states. So you, you will be using, uh, you could be using the state transmission utility of the state in which you are producing. Also the state transmission utility in the state where you are consuming. And in between, you would also be using the uh, central transmission utility, the CTU, which is uh, managed by power grid. Also, uh, these power transactions are driven by central policies mainly and also on the consumer part where you are consuming the power the state policies also prevails in certain cases also you uh, there are some additional charges being implied on interstate open access now if it is a brown power which you are dealing or power exchange power which you are consuming through the 
interstate network you would be liable to pay the point of connection losses and charges to power grid but if it is a renewable power or green power then those are exempted for the charges uh, POC charges when you are uh, wheeling it from one part of India to another part of India however you need to pay the POC losses to the power grid for availing their transmission unit network now the major question comes is which is better for your industry whether intrastate open access or interstate open access now the answer to this lies in the following points it depends mainly on contract demand if your industry's contract demand is very high suppose 50 mva or above such as 100 mva 70 mva in that case uh, generally your plant would be connected at a very high voltage level with the distribution company or the transmission company such as uh, it could be 66 kV or 132 kV or maybe 220 kV. We have seen a lot of industries in eastern part of India and southern part of India being connected at CTU voltage level also because they intend to procure only interstate power either through exchange or through some other captive options where they have put in power plants, maybe wind power plants or hydro power plants or solar power plants and different part of India and they procure power from those power plants to their uh, end consumption unit which is connected at the CTU voltage level. So in case your plant is connected at a STU voltage level of 132 kV and above or directly at the CTU then interstate open access gives you better options to explore for either through IEX or PXL through exchange or through uh, uh, interstate captive open access. That would be a different uh, discussion which we can have in another different topic where we can discuss it about interstate captive open access and intrastate captive open access if you like to know more about that do write in the comment box and i will try to make a video on that also now the third point which you need to see is uh, how many units of your plant are there in different parts of the country so suppose you have only one single unit of say 30 mega mva of power demand only in one part of india and you don't have requirement in other part of India, it makes sense to go for an intrastate open access than interstate open access. However, there are large conglomerates which have a lot of units across, spread across different parts of India like Gujarat, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, Tamil Nadu. In that case, they can look into developing a single uh, generating unit at uh, one part of India, maybe a solar captive open access or a thermal open access, and then wheeling that power to their for captive consumption in different parts of India through interstate open access network. Now, one more important thing to think about is how big is your team size? Will it be able to manage the scheduling and forecasting and dispatching of power 24 into 7 uh, from dif in different parts of India? In that case, you need to have your dedicated control room or you need to engage a power trading company which can understand your load requirement and can help you with power uh, evacuation from time to time. So your team size is also important. And finally, uh, there are a lot of industries who are looking for RE100 ambitions that they want to consume their power from 100% from uh, green power. In that case, uh, only through solar, it's not possible. So you might be purchasing power through uh, captive solar open access through intrastate mode. But you, if you have the intention to go for 100% uh, RE consumption then you need to add the mix of wind today uh, along with hydros or maybe you can go for green open access through exchange they have a product called gdam and or in future you may be looking into hydrogen procuring green hydrogen for your plant in that case interstate open access makes more sense because uh, in northern part of india eastern part of india you don't have wind yeah, the wind is mostly located in gujarat or in the southern part of india in that case you need to procure this power from these areas to your plant which could be located in any part of India and for that to happen you need to rely on the interstate open access network. So uh, for achieving RE100 ambition for a bigger plant size uh, interstate open access makes sense and for smaller units for say 5 to 10 megawatt of power requirement interstate open access makes sense. Now both these interstate and interstate has their own sets of challenges now when we discuss about intrastate open access they are more heavily dependent on state policies and regulation uh, that means if there is change in government change in uh, policies or regulations by the regulatory commission it directly impacts 100 percent to your power procurement uh, planning and execution so your risk is 100 percent exposed to the state policies and regulation 
now since it's considered intrastate is only you're dealing with the uh, state load dispatch center or the discoms and the officers involved in that so there is a kind of red tape uh, where you need to manage all these uh, transactions with all these different uh, bodies so that 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 and still in india the uh, local level uh, transactions happens manually uh, not digitally so this this poses a challenge to executing these kind of contracts now viability also changes from time to time because the moment the new state government or the new regulator changes policies uh, your uh, landed cost of power val uh, tariff changes drastically we have seen in, it in multiple states where change in government has changed the power uh, purchase scenario completely now coming on to interstate you are more immune uh, to the change in the state level because you are connected at a very high voltage level and you are only dealing with a uh, entity called power grid which is more or less highly digitized and uh, but in that case in case you are connected at a lower voltage level say 33 kv and you intend to procure power through interstate open access then in that case you would be co coordinating with multiple agencies multiple load dispatch centers discoms and in that case power traders can come to your rescue in coordinating uh, and helping you in coordinating with these agencies and sorting your bills at the end of the month but in that case you need to pro give a lot of charges to these agencies so landed cost of power which is coming to your plant would be at a very high rate and may not be viable in most of the cases what we are seeing today with exchange power not viable in most of the states in india for the industries so these are both the pros and cons of going with interstate open access and interstate open access end of the day the choice remains with the industry and uh, good consultants good power trading companies can help you in understanding what are the various options you have uh, for procuring power for your industry which is best suited for uh, meeting your requirement so uh, that's all from today's uh, presentation in case you like this presentation do consider subscribing to this channel uh, give me a thumbs up if you like this presentation and share your concerns in the comment box i would like to uh, answer to your queries in case you have any thank you and have a great day